but just like, do I want to listen to this album is always my first question. And no is the answer. Hey, everybody, what's up? Jason, Joe, and Krams are here. Another week, another band. The replacements this week. Almost did them about a month or two ago. Cram said he was going to pick them. Then he decided that he might also want to do Sonic Youth. Put it up in a poll and Sonic Youth won. So we held off on the replacements for a little while, but now we're coming back around to them. Seven albums in the 80s. Uh, Their last album came out in 1990. I think I've heard all of these except the debut before. I have heard the big three, of course. Uh, let it be Tim and please to meet me and that's it I never cared to explore after before that I just took the the meat of the replacements listen to that so this is interesting to see sort of like where they came from where they went after their their big three albums that everyone seems to love so this is it was interesting I I enjoyed this more than I thought I would so yeah I don't want to give it away too much but interesting interesting band they're a top 50 probably top 40 band for me really got into them freshman or sophomore year of college listened the hell out of pretty much all of their albums always been a big paul westerberg fan i think he doesn't get talked about enough as one of the all-time great songwriters because i think their best songs hold up among some of the best songs of all time for me at least so yeah loved the hell out of this thanks for doing it boys let's talk replacements okay well I guess I should kick this off as the least schooled and probably the biggest hater in general. But actually, I don't know how Jason feels. I thought I thought they were like a Jason band, but the more I listen to them, I don't know. I feel like he'll have his his favorites, and they'll probably be a little different than mine. At the bottom for me, and this is the only album I really disliked, is going to be the sophomore effort Hoot Nanny. Uh, from 1983 the the biggest surprise for me and this is a little bit of a spoiler was the debut and just how kind of raw and punky it was but still like there were some pop hooks in there there's some melodies and interesting guitar parts that I was surprised that they could pull off so early so I was like okay well great can't wait for the second album hated it thinks that I think it stinks all it sounds like they're trying like new things for like that cool kind of we don't care punk energy from the first one now they're like trying too hard to like be cool and anti-establishment and the songs just don't have anything new or interesting to offer especially when you listen to like their later stuff what they turn into you know i think they really found their sound after this one so with Hoot Nanny, it's like, I don't know what they're going for. They're not kind of that fast, cool punk. And they just seem like they're trying too hard and not a single track impressed me at all. Uh, the only one I kind of like is Mr. Whirly, which is the like five Beatles songs all mixed up and, and whatever. That one I got a chuckle out of, but like, even like the humor seems like they're just trying a little too hard on this one. So. Didn't like it at all. One and a half stars for Houdini. I can uh, kind of see where you're coming from with that. Actually, I, I do see where you're coming from with that. I get, I get it, but I still think it's better than the debut. My number seven is Sorry Ma Forgot to Take Out the Trash. It's uh, rough, scrappy. It's not recorded that well. It's really punky. You got all these like blasts of punk energy. The songwriting, eh, it's not really there yet. You, you get kind of glimpses of it here and there. Johnny's Gonna Die is really cool, interesting, not not kind of your typical punk song. It's kind of moody, atmospheric, kind of an interesting melody. Overall, I just I, it's just not not really there in the songwriting department. The, the whole entire replacements catalog is kind of like a, a spectrum. Like it starts with a lot of energy and kind of rawness and moves towards like craft and songwriting and that sort of thing. And I guess 
wherever you think they hit the sweet spot between the two is the album you're going to like the most. For me, this is the furthest away from my sweet spot. Two stars for me, but I think I think even on this, these early records that you can tell that there's more there and like that they're not tapping into yet. You can tell that, that he has a point of view and that they're more skilled than most punk bands at playing their instruments. And like, you can tell that this is going to be a band that evolves to something bigger than this. So two stars for me, but I, I think you can see that it's going to be going somewhere, even at this early stage. I love that album. You're underrating it. They were already there. They let off already there. Um, my number seven is going to be the final album, All Shook Down. Got it at three stars. And uh, yeah, if they started off as this raw, fun, energetic, you know, punk rock influence band, they ended with now Paul Westerberg is a really good songwriter. But for me, this album just really lacks a lot of passion and replacements flavor on it. The songwriting is good. I think there's great songs, but I don't think they're played with the same amount of passion and charisma that they've got. Point of view, like Jason said, is kind of lost. He seems just kind of like tired or bored, not really putting his heart into it. And when he does, I think the outcome is usually fantastic. This one just seems kind of soulless doesn't really have any fun on it. It's a little hollow sounding, but again, I mean, you know, this songwriting is pretty good. Merry Go Round is good. Been out of shape. I just think it lacks a lot of the stuff that you want from a replacements album, but the strength of the songwriting gets it by as an enjoyable listen. So I've got it at three stars, but it is my least favorite. Interesting. It's always easy to see what the, the knowledgeable fans think. So right now I'm, I'm a little shaky on my list i just i don't know if it's correct my number six going to be their second last album don't tell a soul big disappointment for me and it's hard to talk about these albums without totally giving away my feelings on the preceding ones but compared to the one before this it is just a huge letdown it is so kind of one note and flat sounding feels like the entire replacements have been replaced and they did replace uh the original guitarist bob stinson with bob slim dunlop and i don't know there's just no like energy here there's no passion there's no humor it's like westerberg basically just said okay i'm i'm running the whole show i'm gonna do everything i want to be this like adult singer songwriter now i'm gonna be like whatever i don't know what he was going for mainstream or something but it's just this one really fell flat for me a couple decent tracks aching to be pretty good it's kind of like countrified which i liked uh their blind is all right but as a whole the music is just so uninteresting especially coming from how varied they were previously this is just sort of two one note I did not like it. Big disappointment. Two and a half stars for Don't Tell a Soul. All right. My number six is going to be the second album, Hootenanny. Still kind of this like rowdy, punkish record. Still pretty sloppy. I think the production here is slightly better. And the songwriting's growing by leaps and bounds. But like Joe said, they do try a lot of different things here. Kind of like dabble in rockabilly and stuff. And a lot of those experiments don't work that well. I think they're better at sort of their core sound. I think Keller Me Impressed is kind of like the first really good song in their catalog though. I think that's the obvious standout. Um, So for me, this is just okay. I have it at two and a half stars. All right. I also have Hootenanny now at my number six, but I've got it at four glorious stars. It's a great album. Although, I mean, Joe's criticisms are correct, especially compared to the first album, but I still think it works. And I think the creative sort of choices they make here are really cool and will help them round out their sound and their identity right after this. Songs and the production are a bit more well-rounded and obviously they're doing that 50s boogie rockabilly style, some blues coming in. It's also a little bit, even though it's still got that raucous to it, (coughs) excuse me, it's still got these newer kind of softer sweeter nicer touches all over it and like as the replacements go paul westerberg just gets like 
just wears his heart on his sleeve like more and more and the things just get more sweeping and more like romantic as it goes uh jason is absolutely correct like they're really spreading their wings especially in a song like color me impressed it's like their full first like really fully realized like artistic complex approach to their style uh, mr Worley is cool i love within your reach um, buck hill is a really cool great instrumental with like some post-punk vibes on it all the the fun and the character of the, the charisma of the first one is all over it too it's just a really fun fun good record um and it's a cool sophomore album i do like the debut more but yeah number six four stars for hootenanny we'll say that i definitely discounted the replacements in my mind a little bit because they're another one of those bands that's like so beloved by critics that just do not get that level of adulation at all. I think they're they're good. They're very good. But I was looking at reviews and I'm just like, people were losing their minds over some of these albums, which I guess you had to be there or be like Ryan Kramser with four stars for Hoot Nanny, which just blows my mind. But hey, that's, that's why we're all different. I had... Uh, <laughs> I had Chinese democracy at four stars, so I'm not one to talk. I cannot speak for that. But my number five is going to be their final album, All Shook Down. I do like it. It's fairly large step over Don't Tell a Soul. I think it goes back to that sort of crunchy sound a little bit more, even though it's at this point it's all... Paul Westerberg. I think it's, I mean, he took complete creative control on this one. I know the replacements play on this, but I don't think they have any songwriting cre uh, credits. So it's pretty much just Westerberg, the replacements kind of filtering in some studio musicians. But I, I think it's a little fuzzier, it's a little chunkier, a little more classic replacement sounding. It's not as slick and like trying for like, I don't know, critical appeal or whatever he was going for on Don't Tell a Soul. This one just sounds a little bit more fun. I like Sadly Beautiful. That's a nice steel lap guitar. Merry Go Round is kind of like, it feels like a replacement song. I just didn't get like any of that replacements vibe on uh, Don't Tell a Soul. This one I get a little bit more. It's a little strained, but I can still feel it. So... I don't know. I, I like nobody. I like these songs just in general a little bit more uh, than than the last one. So I, I give it like three stars, I think, for this one. But for being like a solo album for Westerberg, this feels closer to the actual replacements than the last one. Don't tell a soul. My number five is going to be Let It Be. And I think this is a, a good record. They kind of find themselves on this, but my, just my personal taste. I, I like the more refined type of sound and I think they're still kind of loose here Qu not quite nailing the uh the performances that much although I think the songwriting is getting better with every record and they're working towards something and you can tell that they are I Will Dare is great Androgynous is really cool my favorite of the original songs on here is probably 16 Blue I love the cover of Black Diamond I think it's awesome it's kind of like they're doing it ironically, I think maybe, but also you can kind of also tell that they have a love for the song and they, they really, it's kind of reverential at the same time. So there's like this dichotomy that, that kind of works with it. Yeah. I mean, most of the, the album's pretty good. It's just not really what I like. I, I think they get a lot better with the next couple records and not quite there yet. I do like it. Three stars. Saw that coming. Jason likes his production very, very clean. There's no doubt about that. My number five is going to be Don't Tell a Soul, four stars. By now, Joe, Joe's, you know, for a replacements newcomer, you've kind of got a, a good pulse on what's going on. It is sort of turning into just the Paul Westerberg does his adult alternative thing by now which is kind of disappointing coming after please to meet me because they did a lot of really cool things on here i do think it's considerably better than all shook down to me this album is just kind of like tim light and it's maybe my least favorite sounding album it's way too crystal and clean and 
Um, I need it a bit dirtier. Everything's a little too pretty. It almost sounds like it's like a jangly, like Smith's album at times. Are we missing some of the band's identity, some of the fun, like the just teenage rebel kind of, you know, style they used to do, but, you know, just kind of like the songs are still really good. Like I said at the beginning, I think he's a very underrated songwriter. Um, I think talent show is really good. Aiken to be is that really cool twang to it. Um, anywhere is better than here. I'll be you is really awesome. Probably the only song in the album that could live up to something on Tim or please to meet me. Yeah. It just doesn't have quite the like, just true nature of the band on it. Like, at their heights so i still like it a lot four stars great album number five don't tell a soul okie dokie rolling along i almost had a controversial pick here it's, it's really close it's the same stars but uh, it's it's real it's real tight here i'm gonna go with sorry mom forgot to take out the trash at number four almost was my number three which the the, the album that would be here would upset people. Fortunately, Jason's took all the heat off me, but I still have this at number four, but I, I like it. And I think it's, it's tough to rate things on stars because it, I liked it so much better than All Shook Down, Don't Tell a Soul or Hoot Nanny. I was really surprised at how much I did like it. I think it's really fun, really brash. Like you can tell where like every American punk band got its DNA from like Green Day and Blink-182 and all the kind of bands you probably might not like if you're a replacement fan, but the way they borrowed the humor and the irreverence and the sort of teenage, you know, troublemaker kind of stuff, you can really see the DNA, like just spreading out from this one. And I, I never knew they were this punky. So that was interesting to hear. And it's punky, but it's also really catchy. Like it's not just like clanging away, like, I'm not a big Sex Pistols fan. I don't think they were that interesting. I don't think their songs sound good. I think this type of punk definitely fits me better. Uh, just a lot of raw energy. Uh, Careless especially has like that brattiness. Like they just don't care. Like they just want to have fun. Just a uh, customer. I love the way they intersperse like the, the lines. Like where are the Twinkies? And what's on sale. I, I, I think it just really works for them, the brand of music they're playing. But I also think like there's some interesting guitar parts in here. Like they're legitimately good at their instruments. So they're almost, it almost feels like they're playing down a little bit just to get like that raw energy and power going. And they could play better if they wanted to, but like it's just what fits them right now. And uh, it, it definitely works. You can hear the potential, hear the hooks, hear what's to come like they're they're better than just a punk band i like this one three and a half stars close to four maybe four if i listen to it a little bit more i think it trails off a little at the end but i think the way it starts is uh really good all right my number four uh we're gonna jump to the other end of the spectrum and go to their last album all shut down i think it opens really well america rounds awesome i really like it i think nobody's really good sadly beautiful is a nice ballad uh, when it began is good some really nice songs like Cram and Joe both said, I think the songwriting is good, but it never really gets cooking. The energy is just not there. It's kind of just peters out and it's a little too clean. I do like my records clean, but there's, there's a, a balance. I think there needs to be a little bit of an edge and this just doesn't really have much of that at all. So I've got a three and a half stars just on the strength of the songwriting, but yeah, that's it. Uh, number four, all shook down. All right, I'm with Joe. I like this album a lot, and I wish it could be in the top three, but the top three is just too obvious. Um, my number four is going to be Sorry Ma Forgot to Take Out the Trash. Yeah, glowing review by Joe. Well done. Kind of surprised you liked it as much as you did, um, but happy. Giddy is a schoolboy about it. This is great punk and it's just a really unique version of it. It's really quirky and innocent. It's not, you know, super nasty and hardcore. It's more mischievous than just like mean or it's not too brash and, um, you know, can be really earnest and perky at times. And I think all the songs are just great little pieces of music. The star of this show is Stinson on guitar. There is some really cool 
guitar leads, riffs, mini solos in here that you're not going to find on a lot of punk albums, which I think, like you guys both said, kind of highlight that this group could go somewhere. Um, and it doesn't take them long to evolve out of this, but this is like, we've talked about it with some discographies before about debut albums that are just like the perfect foundation and growing point for a band. And for me, this is like the perfect first album for the replacements. It doesn't take itself too seriously, gets their spirit down. Like that's another thing. Paul Westerberg, these early albums has such like a free spirit about them. Like it's just, it's so cool. I, I've always loved the vibe of the band, which is why I rate some of the later albums so low because that vibe kind of dies off. But this one is great. Four stars for me for Sorry Ma at number four. All right, well, this is the album I have the most trouble with. And it almost was my number four. It has such high highs, but also like half of it, I consider completely inconsequential. And I just would skip through it basically. If, I, if it wasn't for this channel, half of this album, I would just hit forward on skip it. Uh, let it be. This is a tough one because this is the one that has like perfect scores across the, the board from every critic, like A plus, five star. I don't get that at all. I think some of the tracks on here are almost perfect. Something like Unsatisfied, just monumentally good. Weird mix of like Rod Stewart, every picture tells a story. Like it's like the same intro almost, like that real like sparse, uh, almost mandolin sounding acoustic guitar. And then there's songs like uh, Gary's Got a Boner, which don't really need on here that hits really in like that blink 182 sort of like bratty irreverence which uh, i'd hope they kind of moved on from say with like tommy gets his tonsils out uh answering machine i just don't see the need for these tracks to be on here like they could have just put on a real song it would be much better but I think when they are like writing real songs, and maybe that's part of the appeal, I guess, at this point, but I don't, I don't see it. It's, it's a real like teenager, you know, disillusionment and, and everything else, but I don't know. It, it's just too off kilter when it's like high culture and, and low culture. I like the, the Black Diamond, the Kiss cover. Unsatisfied is phenomenal. Androgynous is really ahead of its time with its lyrical contents and just sort of like the, the low-key piano part, like really cool. There's, we're coming out as like really punk. I will dare is like a classic replacements, jangly sound that they would move into with, with Tim and uh, Pleased to Meet Me. But like as a whole, it just doesn't feel like it fits together as a whole album to me. Like there's some really awesome highs. The, um, mostly instrumental senior video like just i don't get that at all why it's there why they felt they needed to put like an instrumental on after unsatisfied and it, i don't know it just seems like there's weird choices all about this one and i think they'd get much better sort of much more mature i guess with tim and kind of move away from like the teenage bullshit that they kind of get into on this i like it at like I think it could have been great, but as it is, it's like three and a half stars for me. So it's a, it's a tough one. I struggled with this one a lot. I wanted to hear what the critics heard, but I just, I didn't hear it. And my number three is Don't Tell a Soul. And I'm up to four stars on this one. I do think they're moving definitely in more like kind of a commercial direction, more of the Paul Westerberg show. But I think... I think it works. I think it's really good. The songwriting on here is really good. And I don't think it like totally runs out of energy the way All Shook Down kind of does. Um, I think this one is kind of, you know, him sort of taking his place among some of the great American songwriters, like your Springsteens and your Petties and all of those people, or at least it's his attempt at that. And I think it's a pretty good attempt at that. I think there's a lot of good songs on it. Aiken to Be is great. They're Blind, I think is awesome. I'll Be You is really good. Just overall, I think it's a, a solid songwriting record with some good playing on it and I don't love the production I don't really love the production on any of their albums if I could you know change the production on 
all of these I would, <laughs> but um, overall, it's a good record. All right, my number three is going to be Please to Meet Me. I've got it at four and a half stars. Not quite as good as the top two for me, just because I think there's a little bit of filler. I don't have one song on either Let It Be or Tim that I dislike or would skip, but I really love the direction. And I would say this is probably the best sounding album. All the horns and the sort of like jazzy influences come in and, you know, there's just a lot more going on with the production here, which I think is really good. The details are done perfectly. They're getting farther and farther from punk. Westerberg sounds great. It's got, you know, a little more mainstream appeal, especially with, you know, something like Can't Hardly Wait. And it's got just a lot more like positivity on this album, I feel like, than the other ones do. Like just direct, like happiness and joy at times. Alex Chilton is so, so good. Great production on that song. Nightclub Jitters is a really cool piece. So really, you know, exploring some different things. But, you know, they're also, I call it a joyous album, but they have The Ledge on it, which is a very dark, heavy song about suicide. Um, And I think that kind of hurts the album a little bit. It's a little bit out of place. And yeah, I kind of like put the first three albums in like its own trilogy when they do the teenage bullshit a lot. And that's why I love Let It Be, but I'll get on more about that later. But this one, I think, is just starting to get a little bit too polished and some of like the immaturity is gone, which I think is part of the old charm. And They're not as scrappy as they were, but it's still great. The songs are great. And I, I don't think I was right to say it at filler. That's the wrong word. It doesn't have my standouts as much as the other ones. Um, yeah, there's not really a song on here I dislike. But yeah, I think it's awesome. Sounds great. A lot of fun. Pleased to meet me, four and a half stars, number three. All right, moving on. This is a point where I think these albums are now complete. My number two is going to be Tim. And right off the bat, you got like that rockabilly coming on hot with All By. It still has like that sloppiness a little bit, but like it's more controlled. It sounds like a little more deliberate sloppiness. I think the melodies are a lot better. I think the songs are a lot tighter. For some reason, I think the production's worse on this one than on Let It Be. Like it's sort of like overly 80s, like a little more reverb. Like the band sounds almost like distant a little bit. Like it doesn't have a like clear conciseness that I liked on, on Let It Be. Um, but I really love the variety here. You know, Lay Down Clown has a little more rockabilly. There's some slide guitar. There's some like they they branch into like cow punk here, which is awesome. The songs are really good. Like Bastards of Young and Kiss Me on the Bus are just like really good pop songs. Like their songwriting outside of just like the, the lyrical content and sort of moving away from the teenage angst and stuff like that. I think their songs sound really good. Like they're really tight good pop songs and I love the way they, they bring in like that country stuff on uh, Wages in the Sky it's like this nice little shuffle but they still have you know the classic punky stuff uh, left of the dial swinging party is like jazzy a little bit and um, it's just it's really cool and I guess the first couple of times I, I listened to this album before we did this like I didn't quite get all these different sonic variations in there but listening this time where I really got to like sit down and focus and I just heard so much cool stuff that I, I didn't expect I guess on the replacement so uh, I think that it was my favorite part of them and this listening experience was getting all those like okay wow I, I hear this like that's some cool country shuffle and some cow punk like I love cow punk so uh Tim very good. I have it at four stars, and I think it's like on the, the higher end of, of four stars. I also have Tim at number two, and I also have it at four stars. I think Joe pretty much nailed it. Uh, just a ton of good songs on here. Hold My Life, Kiss Me on the Bus, Swing and Party, Bastards of Young, Left of the Dow, Here Comes a Regular. I mean, this could be a five-star album, I think, but like Joe said, the production on here, I do not like really at all. I think they finally for me, get it together on this record and please to meet me. 
And to me, they're their two worst produced records. I just don't like the way they sound. I wish they sounded better because song song wise, I think they're five star albums on this, but I just don't really want to listen to them that often because I don't like the way they sound. But songwriting, fantastic. Love the way it sounds. Sounds like you're in a dance hall, which is the entire point. It's a five star album. It is my number two. Yeah, just slowly shedding the punk. But yeah, there's a really cool just like little window of styles just blending in perfectly. Like Joe was saying, you get the rockabilly getting a little shuffle jazzier. Um, got that like leather jacket jukebox teen rock style, but also just like this nostalgic bar kind of scene to it. Album makes you feel like you're kind of like at prom. I think it's awesome. I think the strength of this album is the momentum and the sequencing starting off with hold my life. I'll buy kiss me on the bus. All these songs are great. Ending with Here Comes a Regular is perfect. You get kind of that slower middle part, with like Waitress in the Sky and Swinging Party. Then Bastards of the Young brings it back up with the energy. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's between this and Let It Be, it's almost like a flip a coin when you wake up. But I think right now in my life, I'm probably the strongest firm number one for me. But since I've been listening to them for the last 20 years or whatever, 15 years, I've never been able to been like, is it Tim or is it let it be for me? But now I'm, I think most confident that I've ever been that it is going to be what it is. So yeah, I love this album. You guys nailed, nailed it. All these songs are great. Um, such an underrated songwriter. So I've got Tim at number two and I think for albums of the year in these respective years, both of these let it be and Tim were like the closest to the strongest like second place winners I've ever had in those years. And they could have gone back to back, which would have been cool, but just didn't happen, unfortunately. What the hell won in 1985 for you that beat out Tim? Uh, Psycho Candy. Yeah. Well, whatever, man. What won in 85 for you? Uh, Kate Bush. Hounds of Love. It's my only five star album that year my second least favorite year in musical history probably so tim tim would have made the top 10 i think though it's it's definitely climbed up the the charts so good for the replacements my number one is it could have made the top five in 87 obviously it's pleased to meet me but 87 was such a strong year for me uh, still top 10. I have it at five stars, which it increased in an entire star uh, over the period. I had it at four stars before, but on subsequent listens, I just found so much to like about this one. Uh, just starting off with IOU, such a great song. For some reason, I didn't hear all this cowpunk the first time I heard it, but like they got this like awesome mix of like lone justice in like punk and just really strong catchy songs with this cool like country western i love it I, I, I wish they'd do a whole album just like that but every song on here is like in its own genre and i honestly don't think i know of a single album with more sort of like variation ever I use the cow punk, Alex Chilton's power pop, nightclub jitters is like loungy jazz. I don't know, has like all these ska elements. Shooting Dirty Pool sounds like ZZ Top. Uh, the Ledge is like this jangly 80s goth. Like there's, there's almost no like replacements. Like you can still tell it's in their DNA, but like Red Red Wine might be the closest to the replacement sounding. And you, you know, Skyway kind of sounds like that unsatisfied, like, faux rod stewart kind of like early stuff which i really like i think it's cool i like when they bust out the acoustic like that and then you you end it with can't hardly wait which is a fantastic way to go alex chilton of course guess a little guitar on that and i love the horns that pop in it's super catchy i think westerberg sounds the best on this one uh he's you know it's not like one of those voices that you hear the first time and you fall in love with, unless like that's your thing. But for someone like me, it, it kind of had to like grind into me, like repetition, like, okay, he, he wore me down. Now I love him. Now I like his voice, even if it's not like 
pitch perfect or like a Chris Cornell. Like it's, it's got this grungy rawness though that just sort of overwhelms you. I just think it's a really great album. All the songs are super catchy. And Alex Chilton is, is a classic, just the opening chord, just awesome. And everything else is great too. So I really like this album. It's a five stars. It would be runner up if it came out in 1985 or, you know, top five in 88, but it came out in the year of a whole bunch of other giant pop albums. So I can't put it in the top five, but I'm giving it five stars. So really good. Pleased to meet me. My number one replacements album. All right. My number one is also pleased to meet me. Made my list in 87. I've only got it at four and a half stars though. I do think it's their best batch of songs. I agree with Joe. Tons of great variety, but it all makes sense together. It's not like this total disjointed mess. It, it works as an album, which is really cool. I don't know. Awesome. Alex Chilton's awesome. They recorded this in Memphis with Jim Dickinson, who worked with Big Star. And so then you get all these Big Star isms on the record as far as calling a song Alex Chilton, having him play on the record. And it's all great. Um, but I still don't love the production i don't know why like they asked him what do you want your drums to sound like and he was like i don't know poison like it makes no sense why the drums sound that way on this record i really wish that that, that some of the tones on this record were different it it would probably get up to five stars then because i love all the songs i think it's a great record yeah number one pleased to meet me all right my number one is going to be let it be obviously at five stars and I understand what Joe was saying about it, where like those songs that I guess you consider throwaway songs are not serious songs, but I think you're just kind of missing the point of the whole album. The album is this epic saga of like what it is to be like a young boy teen. So all of like, not everything's perfect because 17, you know, year old males are not perfect. So you get these goofy little songs like Senior Video and Tommy gets his tonsils out. Um, and then you get stuff like androgynous and unsatisfied or just like when you really got to like get a little introspective at this time of your life. So I think that's the underlying just brilliance of this album is it's just like this really soulful approach to capturing just like this coming of age state of mind. I think it's a great piece of art, not just a great album. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, not a bad song on it. Black Diamond is so cool. Surprise, Jason likes it. I believe I told you back in the day years and years ago and yeah you're allowed to change your mind that it was better than the kiss version i don't know if you think that is better but it's way better than the kiss version it's one of the, my favorite covers of all time yeah i think there's some really like beautiful moments especially like on androgynous and satis and unsatisfied that almost bring me to tears and honestly probably have at some point in my life great use of the song unsatisfied in um Adventureland, remember that film? It was shot in our neck of the woods. Um, when he like at the end, he's finally going to New York City by himself, and they play that song. One of my favorite uses of a song in a movie. But back to the album, yeah, it's like now we're dancing again. Um, it's still got that raw sort of scrappy spunkiness of the first few albums. It's got like this teenage fifties diner romance, but like updated for the eighties rebel rocker vibes the songs can be really sweet and innocent but like never naive on here incredibly endearing yeah I mean, westerberg is just like really really in tune with himself here i think it's just like the most natural just like focused songwriting he's ever done feels like everything just kind of poured out of him just you know about him reflecting on growing up or whatever and it's just littered with a lot of great catchiness for me in the hooks and the choruses love the guitar especially in senior video i think it's a perfect album one of the best ever five stars number one let it be i get that i think it's better though as a concept than it is as an actual album that i would want to listen to i, I get sort of like the hagiography hey, of it but just like do i want to listen to this album is always my first question and no is the answer most of the time to this i will definitely listen unsatisfied and I will pick a couple tracks out so I mean that's interesting now that how you feel about it and that seems to be like what the critics also say you know and I get that but I just as far as like do I want to listen to it not really I am a 
pleasantly surprised with your experience though, Joe. I was really regretting. You were also saying that you like really didn't like the early replacement sound, but it was really just Hoot Nanny. It was Hoot Nanny, and I listened to Stink too. So that um, one didn't didn't quite. I, that was before I realized that it wasn't a actual album that counted for this. So, uh, and it took a little while for Sorry Ma, I forgot to take out the trash to to grow on me. I thought that for sure was going to be your dead last. Like, explain to me why, like, I'm a four year old, why people like this speech again. But what I'm wondering is why you like that, but you didn't like, like, the Clash early albums. Like, I do I, like I, the Clash I, early albums. You, you did? You have cut the crap ahead of the self titled and give them enough rope. I still like those albums. I don't know. That, that threw me off. That threw off my whole thinking of yeah, you yeah. my cut the crap fandom just throws off everybody and the people don't trust me anymore they don't let me watch their kids watch their dog they don't let me do anything all right so everybody let us know what you think of our lists drop your list down in the comments and be sure to hit the like button subscribe hit the bell for notifications check the description check out all of our social media accounts follow us there and check back tomorrow we'll be doing our top 10 replacement songs we will see you then Thanks for watching.